Welcome to another episode of CEA with Mr. Seward. This is the PowerPoint for 2.3.11, and this is about stormwater runoff. Here's the things we're going to talk about in this table of contents uh, in the slideshow here. And we need to know where does stormwater go? Well, it gets absorbed by ground and uh, also by vegetation. And then there is not all of it gets absorbed. It also runs off and it runs off into our waterways, might run off into the street, might run off into our neighbor's yard. When we develop a site, we need to uh, keep the same runoff as the site was before, they call that pre-development, it has to, after development, have the same amount of runoff. And that means that sometimes you have to detain water on site, and that's done with a detention slash retention pond. Think of that fenced pond out in front of Star Point. And uh, also there is underground storage uh, solutions. They, they take a, and big, build a big tank uh, in the ground, and then they build a building over the top of that. I know a building in Clarence where they did that, uh, actually. They didn't have enough uh, room on site to create a detention pond, so they just dug a big tank into the ground, and uh, the water is actually any runoff uh, is put into that storage tank underground. So uh, site development is any changes or improvements to a site that could be a building, that could be paving, uh, landscaping, or even grading. If you grade a site, uh, it changes the runoff characteristics. So uh, typically development increases runoff and decreases the absorption of water. The exception would be to that is if you take a parking lot and pull the pavement up and uh, replant it with grass, then it would go in the opposite direction. But typically when you put pavement down on uh, grasslands or farmland or whatever, you're going to get more runoff than what you had before you uh, actually had it uh, paved. So regulations have evolved in order to manage stormwater. It uh, protects the environment by uh, increasing or improving water quality and sedimentation which is the erosion control. If uh, a lot of water is running off of your property uh, and it's taking dirt and silt with it and it goes into your streams and such as that, or even into your storm sewers, uh, it can create problems for just for streams uh, and change the path of a stream even. And so it, uh, you need to uh, change that or keep that under control. Uh, you want to protect the property by reducing site runoff. You don't want your house, when you build it, to actually run more water off into your neighbor's yards. And it reduces the impact of storms on drainage systems. So watershed characteristics that affect run runoff, things like rainfall intensity, the type of soil that you have, clay, my house is built on a lot of clay and it doesn't clay doesn't does it does absorb water but it doesn't absorb it as quickly as regular uh, soil does the slope and topography of your land water is going to flow from the high spot to the low spot soil condition how compact is the soil if you dig an area up it's going to probably take more uh, water than if an area isn't freshly dug up. Vegetation, how many plants do you have on your property? Trees, bushes, grass, stuff like that. So there are regulations that dictate the post-development runoff does not exceed pre-development runoff. So we have to calculate the impact of development on stormwater runoff. So the very first thing you do is you calculate the pre-development storm runoff, and then you calculate the post-development uh, storm runoff. And if it goes the way it usually does, the post-development number is gonna be larger than the pre-development. You'll subtract the pre-development from the post-development number, 
and you'll get uh, values. That, and that's what we're going to do in a problem that we're going to be uh, working together on. So in general, the change in runoff, the difference, has to be uh, retained or detained on site such that the additional runoff is not routed into the existing storm water systems or streams or whatever. So uh, you are going to be coming up with storm water management plans, or that's what the state or county or town would uh, ask a developer to do. To do this, you're going to use what's called the rational formula. And here it is, Q equals C, I, A times A. And we'll talk about what these things are. Q is the peak runoff rate, and that's measured in cubic feet per second. I is the rainfall intensity in inches per hour. This comes from a chart, by the way. I'll show you one of those. And A is the acres. C, which is this guy right here, is a runoff coefficient, and that depends on surface type. And that is also going to come from a chart, and the chart for this is included in your formulas page. So you're going to need to get your formula packet out so that you know how to use this. So the rational formula with what's called a reoccurrence adjustment, and this is what we're going to be working with. Q again is peak runoff. CF, this is the new one. This is a runoff coefficient adjustment factor. That is on our formula sheets. The runoff coefficient, which is dependent on the type of surface. Again, that's on the uh, formula pack. And then we have storm intensity, inches per hour. This is going to come from a website. I'll give you a chart for this, but I will show you uh, during the video how to go to this website to find the storm intensity value for uh, our problems. And then you have A, and that is measured in acres. This is always measured in acres. So here is the uh, runoff coefficient adjustment factor. This chart right here is on the formula page and it's on the one that starts with the word structural design at the top of it. Let me see if I can uh, find this. I think it's on here. Here we go. So we got to go down a little bit. Here we go. Structural design. This is the runoff coefficient adjustment factor chart that I was just talking to you about and telling you about. Now, storm characteristics. This is the duration in minutes or hours during which rain falls in a single storm. And that is measured in depth uh, per inch of rainfall resulting from a storm. And it's the intensity equals the depth divided by duration. So we have what's called a design storm. And storm magnitude for which a storm water management facility is designed to handle. And that is dictated by local regulations. And it's described by return period and duration. Return period is the average length of time between storms of a given duration and depth. So a 100-year storm has a 1% chance of occurring in any given year. A 10-year storm has a 10% chance of occurring in any given year. So this 100-year and 10-year doesn't mean that in 100 years, you're going to have a huge storm of that size and duration. It just means that there is a 1% chance in any year of having a storm of this intensity. 10-year storm, there's a 10% chance of it occurring in every, in any given year. So again, not that you'll have one of these storms every 10 years, it's just the chance of it happening in any given year. Same thing if we had a 50-year storm, you would have a 50% chance of uh, a storm happening, or I'm sorry, a 5% chance of a storm happening in any given year. Now, rainfall intensity comes from a lot of different things. It can come from 
uh, maps, tables, or charts. This is a typical map. This comes from NOAA. Uh, and this is a chart. And we're going to be using a chart rather than a map. For instance, a 100-year uh, storm for a time frame of 60 minutes is going to have a factor of 3.12 uh, inches per hour. This is the same uh, chart here. You get the same information as you can over here on this one. I like this version better than I do this guy right here. So here's the example problem that we're going to be doing. We'll uh, go to this in a couple minutes. I'll uh, actually have you uh, working on this with me, and we're going to work through this uh, example problem. So. A developer buys a three acre farm in Nashville, Tennessee. There's a 30,000 square foot asphalt parking lot to be placed on it. Local regulations require the post development runoff be limited to pre development runoff for a 25 year, one hour rainfall. So we are going to find the peak runoff, the change in peak runoff, post development versus pre development. 